11.30 this morning, we're going to get the thoughts of Neil Dixon, the Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation, which is a body for organisations and commissions and provide NHS care. Alongside him, Roy Lilly, a former chairman of an NHS trust and now an NHS policy analyst. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Thank you for coming down to see us here in Westminster this morning. Um, Neil, I'll start with you first. It's a big day for the government today. Uh, this has been delayed, this plan. We're finally getting the detail today. And from what we know so far, it's going very big on prevention, which in the long term, they hope, will ease the pressures on the health service. Yes, I think there will be a strong emphasis on prevention. And to be honest, this does represent the start of a new era. We've had 10 years of pretty severe austerity in the NHS, the lowest levels of funding over a prolonged period in its history. We are returning back to, well, not the best days in the early 2000s when a lot of money went to the health service, but probably nearer the run average that we saw in the first 50 years. Now, that means that we shouldn't be over-promising at this point. This is definitely an improvement. It does represent a very significant opportunity, but we do face very severe challenges. And, of course, we need to put more emphasis on prevention. That also means trying to treat people more in their own homes so that they don't and put extra pressure on those very stretched services. Yeah. Roy, we expect the speech today to be big on ambition. A lot of the details have been outlined in the papers and, and during media interviews yesterday. But it's the action, it's getting to fulfil those ambitions that's going to count. What kind of detail are you looking for from the Prime Minister today to reassure those who work in the National Health Service? Well, you know, that's a really important point because the Prime Minister is saying uh, we, we've given the NHS a huge amount more money. It's not. We're asking the NHS to do a huge lot of more things. They can't because they can't get the basics right at the moment. If the Prime Minister had said, look, we know the NHS has had a rough time. We're putting the extra money in that we can. It's the best we can do. We want to get behind the NHS, get it back on its feet again. I think everybody in the NHS would have said, yeah, that's sensible. But to suddenly start deluging the NHS with uh, genome sequencing and, and uh, sorting out people who smoke, everyone goes in a hospital who's got to have a smoking screening test, a drinking test. I read this morning that mums and dads uh, are going to have uh, counselling for two years after a birth and loading all these things on what the NHS is doing at the moment. I think collectively the NHS will say, really, you know, how are we going to do it? Because Neil is right mm. that we've had flatline funding since 2018. The new funding, the first year of the new funding, is an increase of 2.9%. After that, it's 3.4%. This is not a bonanza for the yeah, NHS. Let's talk about that, that, that increase in funding, as the government are, are putting it. The Times is saying that the NHS faces a £1 billion budget hole despite this cash boost, Neil. And the Chancellor's also been writing, I think it's in the Daily Mail today, saying we need to cut out the waste. We're giving you the extra money, but by cutting waste, they can save money as well. How much money is enough for the NHS in its current state? Well, I think the NHS needs at least 4% a year. It's likely to be getting less than 3.4%. Those sound like small differences, actually, there. They're so we do believe that the NHS is not getting enough money, but we also have to recognise the reality of, of where we're at and the health service is getting a lot more money than a lot of other public services. So, as Roy says, this will be a very challenging period. The NHS is going to face some very tough choices. So our plea is to the politicians of all parties, don't over-promise. Be clear. Of course, politicians will want baubles. They will want to say this new thing's going to happen. We're going to save so many lives. The reality is we do have to change the way we deliver services. Mm. We are too reliant at the moment on hospital services. We have not invested sufficiently in GP and community services is that and what the in social is missing, care. Then? I'll ask you your opinion on both of that. They're obviously setting out uh, this plan today. They're putting in more money. But are they missing the bigger picture? Yes. We always hear people within the NHS saying, needs a root and branch review. We need to change the way we operate entirely, but no government seems to want to grab that well, by the scruff look, of the neck in, and take in, on that mantle. In terms of efficiency, the NHS outperforms the economy. It's more efficient than the general economy, so it does well with what it's got. As far as the bigger picture is concerned, Neil is right, you know, keeping elderly people out of hospital and all the rest of it, that's the kind of holy grail. But social services have had their budgets cut by 40%. Now, 
social care is healthcare's partner in delivering care. They just can't do it. We're supposed to be having a green paper. It's got lost in the long grass of Brexit. The Secretary of State, Matt Hancock, was saying on Sunday that there's going to be a green paper soon, next week, maybe, I don't know when, you know, finger in the wind, when's it going to come? It's a green paper. It's a consultation paper. They'll spin that out. Goodness knows what's going to happen to the government, but even if it survives its full term, then there still isn't time to get the green paper consultation out of the way, a white paper consultation and a bill through Parliament. So we're, we're looking at a for social services is sorted out and that just simply won't do because at the moment the NHS is having to do what social care should be doing and that's looking after elderly frail people who shouldn't be in hospital but are. Okay, Roy Lilly and Neil Dixon, that's all we have time for.